I grew up on the west side. I was born in a hospital that used to be at 62nd Street and Amsterdam Avenue. And uh, my parents lived at 88th and West End Avenue. Uh, and I've always lived on the west side. Uh, I, in the 40s, during the Second World War, a lot of refugees came. We had, a, it was a whole international neighborhood. Uh, it was filled with stores that were small stores owned by families. Uh, it had everybody in it. East of Broadway were Irish and uh, Italians, and west of Broadway were most of the Jewish families and uh, a lot of the people who'd come from Europe. Uh, and it was just a glorious place. It was always filled with activity and everything. Since I've grown up, it's still pretty much got that same character because now you can't walk down the street without seeing people from all over, dressed always, uh, noisy, chattering in a million different languages. When I go to the east side, it always makes me nervous. And I realized the other day a friend of mine is moving to New York and uh, they're a l little younger than we are and I kept telling her she's got to move to the west side. And she said, well, Dora says the east side, Carnegie Hill. I said, oh, it's so boring. Then I realized that's the kind of place she wants to be that I would never be happy in. It's a, a glorious spot. What I particularly like is 72nd Street North and then east of Broadway, uh, where we've maintained the character that I used to see. The buildings are reasonable heights. They're similar in style. Um, the, 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 the landmarking of the brownstones has been incredible value. And of course, that's Landmarks West that has done that. Uh, it's just, it's a livable neighborhood. It, um, it doesn't have all the glass and the very tall buildings that stick up like a sore thumb often. And it, you feel as if you have a place. You're not threatened by the height of, of buildings. and It's a just comfortable place. The part that bothers me the most is that we've lost the individual stores and the character of the different kinds of trades that were on Broadway. And that was always such a nice, wonderful thing. From grade school on, we were always involved in our neighborhood. And I, um, I went to PS 166, which now has next to it a wonderful playground, thanks to Arlene Simon and Landmarks West. Um, we didn't have that playground, but we still had places. And we had the, sta the uh, stables across the street. Uh, but we were always interested in the politics in the community. In Joan of Arc Junior High School, uh, we had a wonderful professor, Herbert Eben, who I've always loved, and he came to City Hall when I was elected to the council, uh, who started an organization called Youth Builders. With, it was an, an organization that Eleanor Roosevelt actually started. And we, it was an extension of civics, which is another important thing, is that we have no civics classes in school anymore. So people don't grow up with that sense of understanding the government and what makes it work. But we did, and we would go to town hall, meeting of the air when they had forums, and we wrote letters and we did all that thing and that was an extension that went right up through high school and then I went to college on the west side also. That was a different era and a different place but uh, it's, uh, it, it's the tradition I think of the west side, the politics. So uh, I, my parents were part of, a, of an organization with Ruth Messenger's parents. It was called I think the West Side Schools Community Council and they talked about after school activities and all those different things. So I, I always knew about it. Um, I didn't join the community board until we moved to 75 Central Park West and Arlene Simon said you should go on the community board and then I must have voted some way she didn't like because then she didn't talk to me for three years but <laughs> other than that it was all terrific. Uh, so the community board is an interesting experiment in democracy. I agree with it sometimes and I don't like the process other times but it does allow some kind of participation in what's happening in your neighborhood. So it was just a natural extension when Ruth ran for borough president. Uh, and by this time I was married to this Irishman and um, I, had, I had stopped working and I decided to run. And um, I never forgot where I came from and I think that tradition has always been so important. It's a joke almost when I, years ago I worked for Robert Kennedy as a volunteer and um, people used to say, well, she's from the west side, of the, you know, west side. And then during his campaign, I got a call from somebody in California because he had told that man to call me 
because that guy had said, we're losing the west side of Los Angeles. And he said, call Ronnie Eldridge. She's always saying that about the west side of Manhattan. Then when I went to work for Cuomo, Mario Cuomo in the state government, and I had a different perspective about things, I'd say, oh, she's from you know New York City, west side. And then in the city council, they really thought I was crazy. But uh, it was just, they've, they've detached the west side. They don't think that we're normal human beings for some reason. When we started really working together, it was the canopies on 72nd Street. Arlene was a zealot about those canopies. And I felt, I, I was not. I mean, I, I never want to interrupt the, the, the small shopkeeper. And I, I sort of thought, well, this is going to cost them money. They want to people to see it. But after a while, when you walked on 72nd Street, you saw one canopy after another. You couldn't even distinguish between them. And Arlene and I um, came together on that project. And it was a stupendous project. And we worked together uh, incredibly well. And it wasn't just Arlene. It was the architects that she brought from Landmarks West and her contacts within the government. So we were very proud of that project. And, the planning of the trees and the different uh, lampposts and, and things like that. Uh, so that was a terrific project that we worked on together. We also worked on, on the, the playground, uh, which we would have lost as a first one of those first adventure playgrounds that was historic in the, in the history of changing of a neighborhood and developing. I mean, my first connection with playgrounds was some odd 50 years ago when I used to sit with my babies in Riverside Park at 83rd Street. And at that time, we had no gates around the, the swings. We had concrete on the ground. And the mothers all sat there and said, this is ridiculous. And we did a lot of research. And we went to the Parks Department. And it was a very important thing for my political career. We knew more than the Parks Department did at the time about playground equipment. And that was like a click they talk about. You know, oh, I th you, you think other people know things, and they don't. Most people, a lot of people, don't know what they're talking about. And you do, so you really have that advantage, but you you don't know you have that advantage. Of course, that's what Arlene has. But she also is intimidating, so people listen to it. But she doesn't think she is, I don't think. And I, I have never worked with an advocate as passionate and as hardworking as she is. And with that, she has developed an organization, Landmarks West, which is superlative. It's... Um, landmarked all of this area. It's advanced in design. It just understands the community, and I think um, it deserves the highest medal we could give it. The thing that made that project work so well on 72nd Street was amazing to me, and that was bringing along the store owners and, and the store keepers. And Arlene did that. <laughs> We had the best relationships with these people in the stores and the owners of the property. And we had, many, we had breakfast with them and talked about it with them and, they, and helped them in their, if they had to change the front of their building. Um, and I think that services, they trusted the project. And I, they, they were fully cooperative. I think we had only one building, basically, that was very difficult with us. I love it. I love the trees, and I like the lampposts, and I sort of feel when I go into a store, I want them to know that I helped with this project, but I don't tell them. It's all right. <laughs> I've given up the historic sense of it, but uh, it, it's an enormous difference. And, you know, I don't know anybody other than Arlene. I remember when they built the new building at 67th and Columbus Avenue, <clears throat> that Landmark West was out there looking at the color of the cement that was going to be put on for the sidewalk. So there's no detail that gets ignored. It is such a comprehensive, wonderful thing. The city needs to pay attention to the neighborhoods of the city. I worry sometimes that it doesn't pay enough attention to Manhattan, to this part of Midtown Manhattan. They think that uh, everybody's got a lot of money, they can do it themselves. Uh, but we need those parks, and we need the green, and we need the trees, and we need the, the curbs to look kept and not, you know, stuff. We need the sidewalks to be straight, and we need to protect these buildings. And so if we don't 
keep it that way, we'll lose the whole character, and eventually the city will just be eroded, or Manhattan will be eroded. I mean, I just think that that's what makes the city, or all the different people who live here, and the different qualities of the different neighborhoods. And since this has a special quality, uh, it's exceptionally important. The development of Columbus Circle has always been very questionable and very confusing and very hard to get a handle on it and have a participation in it. Very. Uh, it was outrageous. In wanting the Landmarks Commission to be open and to have them have a hearing and do something about it, uh, they refused. So we finally convinced uh, a subcommittee of the Land Use Committee to have a hearing. Uh, not enthusiastically did they have this hearing. Uh, but you guys made it, the, the people from Landmarks West made it a very impressive hearing, and uh, Landmark West took it over. Uh, so somebody from, from the organization stood at the front door with the, with the uh, clipboard and the timing and would tell people exactly when time and don't leave and don't do this and don't do that, and then Arlene was walking around talking to everybody and being sure that people were going to say you know, the important things and touch the important points. And it was a very impressive hearing. Of course, it made no difference, which was unfortunate. And it should have made a difference because um, that was an astonishing building that when it went up, um, it was also with a troubled history. Uh, and being connected with the Paramount business at Columbus Circle, it was just a very complicated thing as to who really owned that building and had the right to sell it and do that kind of thing. So it was another example of, uh, of government that doesn't necessarily listen to the people it's involved with or should be involved with. The value of the, the, the council hearing and um, emphasizing that the Landmarks Commission didn't have a hearing lasted for a long time. The, the, displeasure of the public at the fact that there was no hearing. So it delayed the whole process of taking the building down long enough that it basically changed the process. I think every time you stand up for something you really believe in, you make a difference. Because you give, not only do you sometimes are successful, but other times you give other people the courage to do the same thing on the issues they're interested in. And that's very important, and that's what Landmark West has always done. No other organization like Landmark West. Everything that comes out of Landmark West uh, has beautiful design. <laughs> I just love the mailings. I love the website. Uh, everything is done with such um, a wonderful touch. So. It's, ob it's the, it, the objectives to preserve uh, the historic sense is very successful. We've, we've landmarked all of these buildings on the west side, and I don't think we would have been able to do that without Landmark West. The attention Landmark West also pays to new things, not only the historic things to preserve, but it also pays attention to the development and to the integration of the two things is, is remarkable. And I'm not, I don't believe there are any other organizations that get so involved in that process. Landmark West is there in every, it seems to me, every project that comes, uh, and at the beginning of a project, so it can have an influence on the design. The connection between Landmark West with the historic part of it and Landmark West with the new development part is also always surprising to me. I mean, Landmark West has the resources to know the architects that are the specialists and what they want to have, the landscape artists, where to go for advice, who to ask for assistance. Uh, it's, it's just a very thorough organization from the ground to the very top of the sky. There, it doesn't really leave any aspect of it untouched. And it has a passion. And the passion is generated by its founder. Uh, and then the people that have come to work for it. Has a, always has a remarkable staff and the volunteers and the interns. It's, it's, it's just a, a remarkable community organization. Because they're the tradition, we want them to uphold. It's important that kids understand the value of the character of a neighborhood and, and work to preserve it. 
And that's not necessarily to stop all development, but to integrate the development and the traditional part of it. And if the kids don't learn it, that when they get to be adults, they're not going to protect it. So we need to continue that incredible passion of protecting your neighborhood and, uh, and realizing the value of all the landmarks and things in it. During the Second World War, we had to, we were we had a project of youth builders, where we were uh, going around looking for tin and lead and all that kind of stuff. And a friend of mine decided we were going to the Schwab Mansion, which was empty at the time, but all of us decided it was filled with ghosts or something. And we very bravely walked up from Riverside Drive, and and the mansion was up quite a bit, and it was a hill. Uh, and rang the front doorbell, and lo and behold, somebody came, and it was the caretaker. And he said, wait a minute, and then he brought back all these keys. And so it always had, I'm so pleased that I knew the Schwab Mansion. I think it brings a delight to people. I mean, I can walk down Broadway now and tell you the store that was there before the store that was there and everything else. Uh, and it's too bad that people don't know that. you know. And this helps them to remember it by looking at it and, and appreciating it. Well, not only does does Landmark West uh, work with city agencies and and worry about development and work with developers, they have a very smart political instinct, and all the politicians are afraid of them, the elected officials. And before they get to be elected officials, everybody knows that they have to go to Landmark West. And uh, whether there are as many people involved in Landmark West as we are led to believe or not, it is a necessary visit and conversation. Uh, and it's great because it makes that person, first of all, they have to get prepared. I mean, hopefully they do get prepared. Sometimes I guess they're not prepared. But they have to begin to try to understand what it means, landmarking. And then they're basically forced to make some, a commitment. <laughs> and, uh, and then they're kept to that commitment. <laughs> so this is organization in its great wealth of, of depth, you know, has also touched that political world, which is a very necessary part of it. I, I can't think of it, any part of what you need to keep a community going that Landmark West has not been involved in. No, it's never done. I mean, you know that there are buildings that are coming down all the time and going up, and uh, that there are buildings in disrepair, there are buildings that are being remodeled with the stoops taken off, and new fronts put on. Uh, I still look at those buildings at 72nd Street as the curve and go, you know, it's a terrible thing and you don't want that to happen. So, of course, I mean, Landmark West has to be here forever. Hopefully the children will come into it. Hopefully the kids who've been on this tour and worked this book and thought about it. But um, it's just, uh, it's part of it. And if you're not there and vigilant, I mean, we never are going to be uh, without a police force. We're never going to, we should never be without Landmarks West. Landmark West.